The recording is in progress. That's what Zoom told me. So we can begin. I got it. That's what Zoom told me. Zoom told you that they got it? Well, there was so when you start recording, oh yeah, a little pop-up comes up that says, you know, you're being recorded. And instead of just being like okay or whatever, it says got it. <laughs> that almost seems yeah. like it's kind of a jerk. It's like, got it? Do you understand this? Do you understand God. how this works? Do you so know what the last three guys. years have been like for me? I am Zoom. <laughs> uh, all right. So SummerSlam ah, is on Saturday. Ford Field in Detroit. Nothing like summer in Detroit. I am very excited. Uh, it seems a little early this year, but I, I've i always loved SummerSlam. Probably my second favorite mm-hmm. uh, pay-per-view of the big four. Um, Royal Rumble being number one. In case anyone oh, yeah. was curious, um, but uh, yeah, SummerSlam big stuff always seems to happen at SummerSlam. They they say you know that uh, uh, Survivor Series is the start of the road to WrestleMania road, road to, yeah, or yeah. whatever they're calling it, the highway to to Triple H's house or something. <laughs> um, but SummerSlam always has stuff that's just as big and often leads into that. So really, the road to WrestleMania starts at SummerSlam, and the road to SummerSlam started at backlash so you know <laughs> we're really just well, so, just on a circular track here SummerSlam, i find brings a lot of the post wrestlemania storylines to a conclusion right yeah and we're yeah. gonna see a bunch of that like uh everything with the the usos the and the bloodline that have been building up post wrestlemania that's mm-hmm. going to well it's not going to conclude but uh, yeah it, it's it'll definitely a hit moment a new chapter yeah mm-hmm. But Cody versus Brock, uh, uh, you know, yeah, that's probably going to be the blow off to this feud. And that's sort of what SummerSlam is like from mm. from back when it was the mega powers versus the mega bucks. I think that Ooh. was the I think One that was the first was gonna explode. <laughs> I think that was the first SummerSlam main event. And I remember it was fairly iconic. Miss Miss Elizabeth provided the distraction. Oh, yeah. Uh well, that was the beginning anyway. of the mega powers exploding. Oh yeah, Macho Man just sort of gave a little look to to mm-hmm. Hogan. So that so there you go. That's a perfect example of it, right? Because um after WrestleMania 4, so Savage wins the title at WrestleMania 4, and then the storyline is, you know, fending off the the million dollar man Ted DiBiase uh and forming this alliance with hulk hogan then they win in the main event of SummerSlam, and there's just that little look from macho mm-hmm. man to hogan and then that starts the story leading up to wrestlemania 5 so that's mm-hmm. a perfect example of where SummerSlam fits in wwe's storytelling structure you know so yes. it, it's going to be an important night and you know guys like brock lesnar that you mentioned a few minutes ago brock lesnar mm-hmm always brings it at SummerSlam. Some yeah. of Brock Lesnar's most memorable moments in his career happen at SummerSlam. So it, yeah. it, it's an important show. And I like that it's remained important. You know, things like uh, Survivor Series, it kind of, yeah, after a while, you're just like, well, this this just doesn't make any sense anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, and and Royal Rumble is, is fantastic and WrestleMania is WrestleMania. So if we can keep... Mm-hmm everyone in the same spot for SummerSlam. I I think we're doing well in terms of quality. They've definitely had trouble sort of maintaining survivor series as one of those like top four Mm pay-per-views, but SummerSlam is always, I won't say that it's the number two, because I think a lot of people would consider the Royal rumble bigger than uh, SummerSlam, but Mm -hmm. Royal rumble like is part of the WrestleMania story. Whereas SummerSlam, I feel like is its own thing where where everything kind of comes together on its own less things are leading into the future and it's more about yeah. concluding the storylines that you have now but. yeah absolutely and and they've got a great opportunity to do a bunch of that on this year's card do you want to like start with the main event and work our way down or do you want to sure. go uh let's from do the it. beginning okay no, well, let's do it let's do it with the let's start with the main event let's start with the big stuff it is the big stuff, and of course, it is Universal Championship match: Roman Reigns versus his cousin Jay Uso. This will be decided in Tribal Combat, mm-hmm. which means anything goes. And Reigns is putting his status as Tribal Chief on the line as well, so mm-hmm. he loses his belt and, and I guess some business cards. 
I don't know if the tribal chief has business cards, but mm. uh, he would be losing that uh, red lay that uh, mm. signifies that he is the tribal chief. Right. And yeah, yeah. yeah. so like putting putting the his status as the tribal chief on the line. I mean, this is that's yeah. big stuff, right? Does Jey Uso lead the bloodline after this? I I I, I don't think. Where... Does Jey Uso just take all his stuff and keep calling himself the bloodline? I I mean, I don't know what happened. Like, there's a part of me mm-hmm. that thinks Jey Uso could lose this match to Roman Reigns. Yeah. Uh, it, it could lead into a feud between Roman and Jimmy. But at the end of it, I could see the Usos going back right in with Roman. That was kind of what already did happen with main event Jey Uso. He eventually mm-hmm. did kind of go back with Roman. And I wonder if they do that or if the Usos and the, like everybody stays apart. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's interesting. I guess it depends how it goes down. Like there's really not a lot in my logical brain that says, yes, Jey Uso is walking no. out of here with the title, but my other brain, mm-hmm. my wrestling fan brain is like the one in your stomach. Yes. Uh, yes. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I, uh, I, 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 keep, I keep a brain there. Oh, good. It, yeah, it, yeah. Lots of storage. Mm-hmm. Um, I start thinking, what if, you know, and what if, let's say someone decides to cash in, uh, you know, um, priest yep. decides to cash in. What if, say, someone's more famous cousin shows up and causes a problem for some mm-hmm. reason? You know, he's mad about Black Adam still, so he's just taking it on his family. I don't know. You know, what if, uh, you know, there is a a few scenarios where Roman Reigns could lose the title here and still look, you know, strong in the process. I mean, you you could always have him lose and then have him win back the title and the the status as tribal chief later. But then you lose everything you've built with this 1000 plus day title reign that Roman's doing. So you, you have to be right. willing to throw that out uh, to have the big J Uso pop. And I, I just don't, I mean, maybe I, I don't know, but it, uh, it doesn't seem likely just because, well, if they weren't all in on a gigantic title reign for Roman reigns, then Cody would have won at WrestleMania, you know? Yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe. but it's it's not really about like, I don't think this match, what I'm looking forward to about it has nothing to do with the result, because I do think Roman's winning, but it's about like what happens in the story. Everything mm-hmm. in Roman matches on, on pay-per-views all year. I mean, they all have a big storyline element that happens at Royal Rumble. It was Sammy finally had to stand up yep. to Roman because, you know, and then at wrestlemania roman win like everything's furthering the story Mm -hmm. Uh, the usos finally turn on roman at money in the bank was it money in the bank i think it was money i think yeah in london yeah yeah so what's the next big thing to happen and i think some options are jimmy uso returning i think is is probably pretty likely uh, yeah, so yeah. he he could factor into the end of the match as well. Like you said, you know, it could be somebody's more famous cousin. Mm. Um, this all depends on, yeah, what's going on with his film career, though, if he's and available. Just a note on that. I The only reason that I think that is a possibility is because I feel like that is the only thing big enough for WWE to be like, yes, we will throw away the streak. Yeah, I mean, if you I mean, if you've got Rock coming back, uh, yes. you can do anything at that point because you could do Rock Roman, and uh, you know, a title isn't going to make that much more important. So you mm-hmm. could do that. Um, but again, like I think the time for Rock to have come back would have been the WrestleMania in LA in uh, last year. However, I mean, it, 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 like. It just depends if he's got a three month window when he can do stuff with WWE and it fits around SummerSlam, then yeah, you know, um, but some other options I think are possible too. Like, I think Roman's got a kind of, cause he's down to just having solo Sokoa and Paul Heyman around. 
Yeah. So I think we could see some new bloodline members, but then they, it has oh. to fit with the storyline, you know? If that happens and they don't call them the new sows. <laughs> wow, what a missed opportunity. <laughs> Um, but that like this would all depend on if there there's people available. Like there's like Jacob mm-hmm. Fatu is in Major League Wrestling, but he's uh, you know signed to a contract with Major League Wrestling. So I don't like could they potentially pay MLW to get out of it? You know maybe. Um, then there's also uh, who else is around? Lance Anawaii. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure whose kid he is, but you know, he's in the Anawaii dynasty. So there are options out there for Tamina. possible other bloodline members. Tamina. Yeah. You could put Tamina mm-hmm. in there. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it kind of comes down to what underhanded thing is Roman going to do to beat Jey Uso? Yeah. Yeah. Is it new bloodline member? Is it just solo Sokoa again? Like mm-hmm. something, Something has to happen that costs Jey Uso the match. He's not just going to lose clean. Yeah, because I think that their next main event program is Jey Uso versus whoever screws it up while Roman takes an extended break, as he usually does from time to time. Yeah, but how how WWE is set up now, he can take a break and still take that title. Um, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, I mean it, it's a it's a tough one to figure out because the the angle they have to do at the end the the finish of the match ideally would be an angle that keeps Jay mm-hmm. strong and shows that Roman needed this extra help to beat Jay and the extra help should be an angle that leads into the next show. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah, no, and and I that that'll probably that's how logic says it will go, but yeah, especially when they they're saying it's tribal combat and anything goes and all that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you know that just, just like, telegraphs that people are getting involved. People Someone are getting might involved. Use a yeah, <laughs> you know. I wish this was how like say like Major League Baseball handled the <laughs> trade deadline or you know like free agency or whatever. It's like okay, we're yeah. having a baseball game, but it's. <laughs> There's no roster rules, right? Like you don't have to submit (laughs) your roster ahead of time. You're just like, okay, the Yankees are going to play the Red Sox. We don't know who's going to be on the Yankees. We don't know who's going to be on the Red Sox. You'll find out when you get there. And then it's a complete surprise. Yeah. (laughs) I wish sports was like wrestling so much. There's so many things they could do. (laughs) A little bit of wrestling uh, storytelling inserted into any real sport would be incredible. Oh, God. Yes. You know, just that, all, all of a sudden, like Aaron Judge walks onto the field and they're like, oh, yeah, well, you know, he's a Yankee rips off his Yankee jersey. <laughs> it's a Red Sox. Like, oh, my God. Oh my what goodness. a deal. To- oh. Well, I guess they signed him during game. the seventh inning stretch. <laughs> Can my you God. believe what we're seeing? What's he doing in the impact zone? <laughs> What's an impact zone? <laughs> uh, uh. Speaking of impact, next on the card. Mm-hmm. Women's Championship, uh, Oscar versus Bianca Belair versus Charlotte Flair. I, huh? <laughs> I, I don't really have much. Like, no. I like all three of those performers, and I'm sure they will yeah. do a bang up job. But I don't know the story or anything like that behind this well, match. I don't have a lot put into it, really. It's nothing, really. They've just been interfering in each other's match, like. Oscar had a title match against, uh, or no, Oscar's the champion. She, mm-hmm. Bel Air had a title match and Flair interfered, and Flair had a title match and Bel Air interfered. So, it it's definitely like, I don't know. Can you imagine going to work every day with the sole purpose of like, I'm gonna screw up my colleague's meeting. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna do today. I'm just gonna screw up that one thing, and then they go home. It's amazing. Yeah. See, if if work was more like wrestling. That would be great. You're sitting in a meeting. You think everything's fine. All of a sudden, a guy from another department, because maybe he's upset about something, comes and <laughs> slams down a bunch of papers, does a run in. <laughs> There's already folding chairs everywhere. My God. Um, Wait, didn't someone so, get fired from WWE a while ago for taking home folding chairs? Yeah. Uh, yeah. One of the writers did. I think maybe two of the writers did. Well, you. 
You can't just yeah. have chairs. You know? No. Come on. No. That's a fireable we only for sure. We are only worth $9 billion. Do you think we, we could <laughs> we be worth... Can't give away billion, chairs? You know, like, come on. They have to sit in a warehouse <laughs> forever. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't like, like, there's really not a lot to get too excited about in this match, other than I like Asuka. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, you know, uh, Asuka as champion, I think is cool, but I don't know if she's coming out of SummerSlam with the title still. Like, I would love to get that Asuka NXT championship run, yeah. but something tells me that Charlotte Flair, uh, wait, oh, no, oh, uh, oh, that's like, my arm. Uh, oh, my arm. oh, God. This guy, oh God, lost in the <laughs> sequence robes of of, of Ric Flair. Um, We've all been. I'm there. not sure where is Charlotte Flair at in terms of breaking uh, Father Rick's 16 time world championship record. I think she's, she's got to be close to that. 13 or 14, yeah. 13 or 14. So I mean, the ultimate goal is is to do that, and WWE is all about breaking records right now. Like they're like, yeah. Gu- Gunther is, I think like a month and a half away from breaking the honky tonk man's record. And I'm that's big. I'm looking forward to the honky tonk man doing a run in to prevent that from happening. <laughs> um, what? there's been a bunch of other, well, Roman reigns obviously is like a record setting title. Yeah. Reign yeah. And, no, no, they're big you know, into it these days. They really they're... like to push these, uh, multi-year champions, which is kind of a yeah. throwback, I guess, but it yeah. is kind of, but I think that's part of the success of the, of the Roman reign storylines is yeah. Roman is being built up as this once in a generation, once in like 50 years type sports icon. Like that's how they're portraying yeah. him. Yeah. And they kind of do that with Charlotte flair too, but it's a little different. I mean, they're, they're trying and kind of succeeding, I think, uh, of <laughs> turning Charlotte Flair into, you know, Ric Flair, where you look at him like she's so associated with the championship. Like she's yeah, very rarely is Charlotte Flair ever involved in a storyline that doesn't have to do with the championship. Like she's yeah. always in the title picture, just like Rick was. Right. And so I, I think she's going to continue that trend up until she's at 17 and she'll retire as, as you know, and be presented as one of the greatest Mm -hmm. women's wrestlers of all time, which I mean, she's, you can argue that she's up there for sure. Uh, I mean, she's definitely not the biggest icon of women's wrestling. Who, who is Becky? (sighs) Yeah, well, I mean, it, it once was Becky. Nobody has ever yeah. been as over as Becky was, but she's not yeah. that yeah. over now. Right? That was that was kind of transcendent of like, like she was the most over person in the entire company. Yeah, 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 yeah. you know, yeah. like that, and that's that she was. Yeah, that's so difficult to do. You know, particularly I, for for a woman. I think it's and, Becky. Um, yeah, Becky would know. probably be definitely in the modern age. It would be Becky. Cause, yeah. Because women's wrestling has unga- undergone such changes in the last mm-hmm. 15 years, right? So you look at it's been presented stars. So... Yeah, yeah. Like Stacey Keebler and things like that. They weren't really wrestlers. Right. But they definitely elevated the image or no. Yeah. I mean, it, women's wrestling has been presented so differently throughout the years. Like it was, you know, with Mildred Burke in the thirties and stuff, obviously like she's main eventing shows and stuff like that. But then you, yeah, her bra and panty matches were weird. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 1930s culture was a little Ugh. taken aback by that. Racy. Um, but then obviously you get into, you get into the eighties and you, you did have this period with, you know, the rock and wrestling connection when Cindy Lauper was involved and you had the fabulous Mula versus Wendy Richter, but like the eighties women's wrestling kind of died out after, after the rock and wrestling connection. And then it wasn't until they tried again with Alundra blaze in the mid nineties and they tried to take it seriously with her, but then it moved into, well, then Sonny came around then Sable came around and Vince was like, ah, I know what these guys want. They want TNA and Playboy. 
And so we got a load of that crap for a while. We did. And one person who deserves a ton of credit doesn't get it because she also gets a lot of hate. But Ronda Rousey was such a gigantic star in MMA Mm -hmm. that it proved to WWE that women athletes can be big draws, can can make Mm -hmm. you a lot of money. Right. And Ronda Rousey was able to do that. And like Ronda Rousey came in and instantly women's MMA was on par with men's. That's never yep. happened in like, I remember boxing tried with Layla Ali and it oh, never, yeah. yeah, it didn't really catch on. I mean, the WNBA is cool and a successful league, but it's not on par uh, yeah. financially with the, with the NBA. Right. Rhonda came in and it just made everything feel so important because she's got such a star power where people either love her or hate her um, that it, it felt so important and when she came to wwe she brought that feelings feeling of importance with her so when becky lynch is kind of around that area of importance Mm -hmm. she feels more important and (laughs) and then people everybody said you know what we this is our our baby face here and some people still had ronda's baby face but ronda was kind of you know again some people love her some people hate her and and so Becky mm. really became a superstar from that. And like, yeah, so like this mix of Rhonda's spotlight, Becky Lynch being awesome, and and Charlotte Flair's sort of um championship pedigree, I want to say. Like the yeah. Flair name yeah. uh being associated with world championships, I just think makes yeah. them feel more important too. So it was this perfect mix that, that uh, brought together the WrestleMania 35 main event. Um, I have no idea what started <laughs> me on that tangent. Who's the top, who's the top icon <laughs> in women's wrestling? Though. I didn't yeah. want to interrupt. Like, <laughs> you were, you're doing well. <laughs> hey, anyway, good. There's a history. I was of learning wrestling. things there. I was interesting. Oh, wow. But, but anyways, yeah, no, I, I, Becky is aces. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Charlotte Flair is uh, at this point, though, I don't know if she needs a title. So maybe they'll just leave it on Oscar to, you know, make us happy through to Halloween when they can have a scary match or something. That's what I'd like. I'd like to see Oscar get like a like a really good run. But I also don't know if Charlotte Flair is going to go baby face or heel. I'm not even sure what she is right now. She's wow. a flair. Yeah. She's a flair, yeah. <laughs> but it's a, it's a triple threat, right? So like really anybody yeah. could win and then they just do a singles match later. Um, I would have to imagine that the long-term program for the SmackDown women's division would be Bel Air as the baby face and Flair as the heel though. Yeah. That's, that's, that'd be a great, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's where I would have uh, Bel Air's your top baby face in, in, on that show and Flair's your top heel. So let them do what they do. That sounds like if you do a long <laughs> program leading up to WrestleMania, that's probably where they're going. Yeah. I agree. All right. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the World Heavyweight Championship that Seth Rollins swears is not a secondary title. Uh, <laughs> just ask him about it. Uh, Seth Rollins is defending against Finn Balor in a rematch of a rematch of a rematch of a rematch. Of the first well, Universal Championship? I don't know. Yeah, I was actually checking their stats. These guys have wrestled each other like a hundred times. Um, <laughs> but I will actually defend Seth Rollins calling the World Heavyweight Championship not a secondary title. And here is mm. my reasoning for that. Okay, there's different rules for the different <laughs> titles, right? Roman's title doesn't have to be defended all that much. Seth's title, I, in my headcanon, is going back to the old, you need to defend this title every 30 days rule. Yes. You know, because that that was the rule. And then Triple H, like, I have a feeling this is Triple H's headcanon, too. And I do do believe Triple H's headcanon because he's got to get stuff approved by Vince McMahon. So I'm certain (laughs) there's a lot of, like, Triple H on the phone with Vince McMahon hearing this going, okay. All right, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, how do I make this sense in, <laughs> in my head? Um, what the hell was I talking about? What was my <laughs> head cannon? 
the World Heavyweight <laughs> Championship being defended every. Oh right, right, right. Okay, so the two yeah. titles have different rules. <laughs> That's so. Seth Rollins's world title is the. Oh, and of course, I'm getting the uh, the uh, message that we're running out of time here. Um, so <laughs> Seth Rollins is the world champion of people who are going to defend the title once every uh, thirty days. Roman Reigns is the world champion of champions who defend it. Whenever the fuck they defend it, <laughs> two different titles, two different divisions. It's like two different weight classes in right. boxing or whatever. No, I get it. Except, yeah. So, you know, may, maybe it's a world title, but yeah, nobody sees it that way. Yeah. It, which is a shame because there really should be like less of a gap between the two top titles. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah, like it when, does feel like there's a very big gap between Roman and Seth, you know? You know, when but, it was yeah. the Universal on Raw and the WWE on SmackDown, they felt, you know, either mm-hmm. one could could headline the pay-per-view. But yeah, yeah. Well, when you uh, got Roman walking around with one big gold title and then Heyman's got two other titles and you're like, yeah, okay, well, it's easy to see who the world champion is here. It's the mm-hmm. guy who has all the world titles. <laughs> Yeah, makes sense. You know, except for this new one, which looks different. <laughs> this kind of, yeah, bowl of spaghetti like. Um, I, I think in this match, though, that that bowl of macaroni and cheese stays around uh, Seth Rollins's waist, unless we get an amazing Damien Priest cash in mm-hmm. where Priest makes it a triple threat and lets Finn Balor pin him. Oh. Oh, that's that's my long shot. I had not considered that. That (laughs) okay. I will totally take that as a long shot possibility. Okay, yeah, that would be something that could happen. So the drama here is not so much. I mean, Finn Balor has cut some amazing promos about how like Seth Rollins injuring him after he just won the title seven years ago. I mean, those have been fantastic. Mm -hmm. But the drama that I think is going to take place from SummerSlam on onward Mm -hmm. is between Damian Priest and Finn Balor. Like that's kind of what they're, what they're building. So much like the, the mega powers defeated the mega bucks and then macho and Hogan moved into a program. I think it's going to be pretty similar here. So one of them is either is going to cost the other one, the, the championship or like most likely. Right. So Mm -hmm. maybe Finn just about has the match won. Priest goes to cash it in. Finn's like kind of like, what are you doing? But that's sort of what the the end of their match at Money in the Bank was, right? Like yeah, a little Priest just kind of showed up. So it could be maybe maybe Priest cashes in and Finn costs him the match. Like, but yeah, it turning into a triple threat with the drama surrounding Damian Priest and Finn Balor. I definitely think that's something that could happen. I think it'd be an it'd be a, a true swerve, if you will. Yeah. Um, and it would also elevate that world heavyweight championship a little bit by being like, "This is worth cashing in on." You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. If it's the guy, you know, it's not like because no one ever cashes in to get a shot at you know the U.S. title or something. Oh like, no, no, Austin know. Theory did that. Austin <laughs> Theory well, literally, yeah, okay. literally did that last week, but it was. Terrible. And, and, <laughs> Fantastic. And they, should, they should never do that ever again. Uh, okay, well, but from you're right, now the, on, no one should do that. <laughs> but you're right. Like the money in the bank cash in makes the title feel more important. Right. Yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> and also like judgment day. Like I just feel like judgment day is your hottest act on raw. It's your second hottest act in the company, putting the yeah. world title in like amongst that act somehow um, yeah. I think would be pretty cool. Then it's your, your solidified as your main storyline on raw. Yeah. And it gives, you know, Finn Balor kind of a, uh, a bit of prestige to work with too. If you put it on him, because he deserves who, do you think it. Goes, who do you think goes baby face between Balor and priest? Ooh. Priest. Yeah, I think Priest too, because I think they want to, um, like, I think they see him as uh, someone, uh, like, after the Bad Bunny stuff in, in Puerto mm. Rico, how well that got over. I think they they see him as somebody who could be in a babyface role. Mm. I don't think he's ever been in a babyface role his entire career, but I, I think he could do it. He might have been for a minute or two in uh, NXT. Yeah, maybe. 
when he was um, uh, still doing the archery thing. The archer of infamy? Yes. yes. <laughs> um, but, okay, so arrows. who Strange. leaves? Does, does that mean Priest leaves the Judgment Day? Or Balor leaves Judgment Day? Maybe they all try to coexist. They're like, <laughs> the group is more important. Well, okay, if, if what you're saying could happen happens, yeah. Uh, yeah, then it's like, okay, there is no tension amongst Judgment Day. And now they're your top heel faction. Priest is wearing the belt or Balor's wearing the belt. It mm-hmm. doesn't matter. Priest should cash it in on behalf of Dominic. And then Dominic <laughs> should win the title. They should be like, that should that should be like Balor and Priest. But there's like, it's not about us, man. It's about the Judgment Day. Let's give it to Dominic. I'd love it. I would love that. That would be incredible. You could do your own belt collector storyline with Dominic. Where he's just going around collecting belts. I want him to be the most decorated Mysterio. Oh, my God. Uh, um. Mm. Sorry. Also, we're down, we're on down. The card, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, quickly uh, on the card as well, the Intercontinental Championship: Gunther versus Drew McIntyre. Yeah, these guys are big and they're going to hit each other a lot, and then Gunther's going to win. So I'll tune in. Yeah, yeah. that's that's going to be fantastic. Uh, Gunther is like has had some of the best matches in WWE history. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. I think this will be really good. I'm not expecting Gunther to lose the title. I think, like, I saw an article out there where someone was like, Gunther needs to lose the Intercontinental title to go to the next level. And I know they always do that. They take off, they take secondary belts off wrestlers Mm. before they go for the world title. I say nuts to that. Yeah. Do what the Ultimate Warrior did, you know? Just be such a dominant Intercontinental champion that they're like, all right. Here you go. You get a world title shot. If you win, yeah. you vacate the secondary belt. And then the secondary title feels like it's this big stepping stone to the to the world title. Yeah, because it's not easy to go back the way it's set up now. Every now and again, yeah. they'll do a storyline with the Intercontinental Championship where it's like so-and-so hasn't won it yet. So they're going to get into this long has, you know, they've won every belt except that one. It's like, yeah, they've been like a four-time world champion. So yeah, kind of no, that, that was the like, thing. With no, Sheamus. I want that one. Yeah. Seamus has been like a multi-time world champion. They're like, he's never won the intercontinental title. <laughs> All right. Okay. You know, sure. Not real guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do think the, the end game with Gunther has to be, you know, he's a guy like Gunther versus Roman Reigns would, would be just fine. Oh, I'd like to see that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even think you'd have to turn one of them babyface. Just let Gunther be a heel, let Roman Reigns be a heel, and everyone will tune in because they're two big Huge dudes, dudes clashing over the title. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be Was such it... a spectacle match, though. Like, that's something that, uh, you know, you, like Vince McMahon would love that match because it's yes. two big guys who look larger than life. It's a perfect Vince McMahon the first know, twenty Rumble minutes of them doing hard chops and no selling them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think what they should do is have Gunther chop him for a bunch, and then Roman looks around, leaves the ring, grabs his vest that he wore for years, <laughs> and was like, "I'm putting this shit back on. Those hurt. <laughs> That's why I put the vest on for so long in the first place. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> now <That> bruises." <laughs> All right, we're we're under a minute here, so do you want to take halftime? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, awesome. Sounds good. All right, I'll touch okay. you in a bit. Okay. <laughs> 